Welcome everyone to our video solution to problem six from Super Quiz 3. This is actually very similar to a problem we saw on quiz, in quiz five. It was problem two, I believe, uh, where if you try to integrate it as it's given, so in this case, for example, we want to integrate first with respect to x, you get stuck because the function you're integrating with respect to x here does not have an elementary antiderivative. So, as the statement of the problem implies, we want to use Fubini's theorem. And remember one of the, the, the beauties of Fubini's theorem is it told you, you can write a double integral as an iterated integral, and you can either write it with the x's or the y's first, right? You just have to arrange the way you write down your domain so that that, that makes some sense. So, in this case, the underlying domain, let's call it d, is all pairs x comma y where, okay, you see the y's come first and they're bounded by constants. So this is a, a type y region. Um, and the y's here go between 0 and pi over 3. And then the x, that's going to lie between y and pi over 3. So I would like to turn these integrals around so that I integrate with respect to y first, so that maybe I'll end up with something eventually uh, that I can actually uh, find an elementary antiderivative for. So I want to turn this around and write it as a type x region. It's going to help me. Maybe you can see it without this, but it's going to help me to draw a picture of what this region looks like. So first, the y values go between 0 and pi over 3. So OK, we'll get pi over 3 up here at the top. So y can go anywhere right, up and down between uh, the x-axis up to pi over 3. OK, now what about the, the x? Well, it's going to always be at least as big as y, which means I need to draw in here the line y equals x. So that's just going to be this nice upward sloping line, slope 1. And the x-coordinate is always going to be bigger than the y-coordinate, which means I'm to the right of this line. And the x is going to stop at pi over 3. Okay, which is actually, if I connect up this way, go down that way, right, that's also going to be pi over 3. So I'm looking, right, at these sections, right? The x coordinate, you pick some y, and the x coordinate has to be bigger than the y coordinate, but smaller than pi over 3. So this is the region I'm looking at. Fine. I want to rewrite my d, where now I'm going to tell you what x values I can get. And OK, well, if you're in this green triangle here, I can get anywhere between 0 and pi over 3 on the x-axis. So that actually won't change a whole lot. And what about my y? Well, my y, for any particular x, is going to have to lie above the x-axis, so it can start at 0. And then it has to be below this line, which is, again, y equals x. So y will just be less than or equal to x. Sweet. So this tells me I can rewrite my integral, which, uh, well, let's see. We could write this now as the integral over d of cosine of x squared dA. So I can rewrite this double integral as the integrated, iterated integral, where I start now with x. x will go from 0 to pi over 3, and y will go from 0 to x. I still have cosine of x squared. I mean, that still worries me a little bit, but uh, it's going to be a little, it won't be as bad. Uh, and then dA now will turn into dy dx, because the y here is on the inside. All right, let's see what happens. So when I integrate with respect to y, this awful function with no elementary antiderivative, cosine of x squared, well, now it's just a constant. So that's really easy to integrate with respect to y. In fact, I could just pull it all the way outside if I wanted. In fact, that's what I'll do. So I'll just pull that cosine of x squared out. 
And when I do, I'm just left with integrating, well, this is a constant function one, which just gives me the length of the interval, which is x. So that's pretty, pretty convenient. Uh, because now, whereas cosine of x squared has no elementary antiderivative, cosine of x squared times x, that I can do with a, a pretty reasonable substitution. Let me see, how about I let u equal x squared, so that du is equal to 2x dx. All right, well, I don't have a 2x, I just have a, a 1x, but, you know, let, let's cheat, right? Let's cheat and just toss a little 2 in there. All right, well, I, as I tell my students in class all the time, you can cheat for a little bit in math, but never for a long bit, right? In the long run, you got to be square, so we got to put a 1 half in here. Fine. Okay, so what do we got? We've got one half. Uh, now I want to integrate. Well, I have x's, but I, I just want to make them u's. So when x is 0, u also is 0, because u is x squared. So u goes from 0 to, now let's see, when x is pi over 3, well, we'll get pi squared over 9, right? It's pi over 3 squared. Cosine of x squared is now just cosine of u, and 2x dx is just du. All right, so this is pretty easy now, right? We have one half, antiderivative of cosine is sine, and we'll evaluate between 0 and pi squared over 9. Okay, at 0, I'm just going to get sine of 0, which is 0. So all I'm left with is one half sine of pi squared over 9. And there's my double integral. So this is, again, the magic of Fubini's theorem. You have a, an original integral where you just have no hope because there's no elementary antiderivative. You switch the order of integration, right, at the cost of having to draw a picture, right, and interpret it. And all of a sudden, wow, we just get this pretty simple answer. Love it.